the assumption that mental disorders are disorders of the brain and the hope that by following this approach, we'll be able to transform how we treat them in the future. <coughs> what does this have to do with DSM-5? Well, we have a unique opportunity to sort of see inside the black box a little bit, to figure out what the ideology was, what the hopes were for DSM-5 prior to it being published. And in 2002, three of the task force chairs of DSM-5 um, published this edited book, A Research Agenda for DSM-5. And they had some interesting thoughts. They said, the DSM's atheoretical approach may have outlived its usefulness and is in fact potentially misleading. Although there is a large body of research that indicates a neurobiological basis for most mental disorders, the DSM definitions are virtually devoid of biology. We have this child disorders chapter, and really the only thing these problems have in common is they're usually first diagnosed in kids. We have thematically different problems here. One of the major themes of DSM-5 is that the developers pulled out problems and stuck them together based on similarity in symptoms. And we don't have the distinctions anymore between child problems and adult problems. So, for example, separation anxiety disorder is now an anxiety disorder. The threshold has been lowered for adults, age 18 and older. Instead of six out of nine inattentive or hyperactive symptoms, it's five out of nine. And the other thing is, if you read the ADHD diagnostic criteria, they're written for kids. So, what, so they had to come up with the like, adult age appropriate version of that. But we don't know how the adult age appropriate versions play out. And we don't know, the big thing I'm curious about here is, we don't know if the adult version that they came up with is actually more prevalent than the child version. Here's a few examples of the adult versions that have been added. So for this, the criteria is easily distracted by extraneous stimuli. Here's what was added. For older adolescents and adults may include unrelated thoughts. Here's what I think is, I, this one jumped out to me as the most interesting. Often runs about or climbs in situations where it's inappropriate. Well, most adults don't do that, right? So what's the adult version of that? In adolescents or adults may be limited to feeling restless.